Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with episode 36 of Skyrim. When we left off, we had just infiltrated the... What was it? Driftshade Refuge to uh, wipe out the Silver Hand, and that is what we're going to do. Because those bastards killed Kodlak. Whoop oh They went down quick. And they actually got hit without me accidentally hitting... Far no, that's Vilkus. I'm surprised I managed to hit them and not him. <laughs> Woo! Yay! Targeted breath attacks. Uh, take those. And there should be something around here. Something good. Uh, not those. Ew. Bad. Uh, I think it's right here. It updates some spots on the map, which is always good to have. The Wisp Mother. Two theories. Hmm. And that's... That's not a useful book. Okay. Fudge that. Argonian Account Book 4. That's also not a useful book. If I remember correctly. And down we go here. This one might. No, it's not. Damn. I was so sure. Uh, Adept. Alright, and I have 99 lockpicks. I have collected a uh, wonderful assortment. Fuck! <laughs> a duck. Alright, well, uh, try this again. Hey, there we go. That's a stuff. Hostess. Sponsored. Totally not, though. And... I... Oop. There, I am being detected by someone. I was going to say noticed, but that's not the right word. F fuck nugget. Okay. I swear, every time it's going to be a new variation of fuck. Okay, and this guy is dead. Decapitated even. Alright. Woo! You are dead, motherfucker. You are not getting up from that. And if you are, you're a zombie. That should already be dead. Because the head was destroyed and decapitated. I don't know where I'm going with this anymore. Take the garlic. Because fuck you. I like garlic. And onions. You know, because they're good. And stuff. And let's see what's in the end table. A kiss, sweet mother. I believe this is about the... Yes, this is about the Dark Brotherhood. I'm going to take this because it is awesome. Lawless Amethyst and gold. I still need to deal with my leather stuff that I have at home. need to drop it off at some merchant instead of having it stuck in a chest for ages and ages. And here's a bunch of silver hand here. Come on. Go down already. There we go. Whoa. Okay, they brought my health down significantly. That's not good. I'm going to poison this. Take a couple of these. And you take this. Call me in the morning. You're dead. There's no calling. <laughs> okay, and which one's which body now? I can't tell. Uh, there we go. Take both of theirs. And they were both female, I think. Yeah, they were. Just goes to show you, gender stereotypes are bullshit. You can get your ass handed to you by anyone. Do not antagonize anyone, ever. Or they will serve your ass to you on a platter. There we go. Got my rant out for the day. Oh, want those. Uh, those are grilled leeks. Don't want those. I would prefer if they were not grilled. Because I can then use them in cooking. Rabbits. And pheasants. Uh, what's in the cupboard? I'm kind of curious. Child's doll. That'd be good. For when I eventually have a child in this game. And pull the switch here. Our church. Uh, church. I already churched that, right? God damn it. I got fucking red versus blue on the brain. <sighs> Jesus Christ. 
Alright, we'll continue on now. Damn, it's already been that long? I thought it was longer. Okay. I think there's a guy coming up here that's a uh, little bit of a uh, hiding bastard. He hides around a corner, if I remember right. But if we sneak along, we can... Whoop. Do this. And... What the hell? How did he get by? <laughs> okay, that was cool. And I'm carrying too much. Fuck. Okay, how many do I need? Not one of those. Uh... I'll just... Yeah, I'll just stop picking them up now. Oh, jeez. That's bad. Wolf pelt. Could use that. Ah, sorry, Amano. Uh, we'll continue on. And take those. Sometimes I uh, shock some customers by uh, dropping that uh, particular word I just said. Uh, a bit of Spanish. Because, uh, you know, it's not on. It's, I'm a white boy saying Spanish. They're a little surprised. But, uh, you know, it's a cool word. Basic, it means brother, and, you know, I consider everyone to be family, which, you know, is a good philosophy to have. I picked that up again when I knew I wasn't supposed to. God damn it, I should really drop off that blade sword, too. It is unnecessary weight that I do not need. Much like the rest of my life. Whoa! Whoa! Focus! what the hell were you doing? She was sitting right there, ready to shoot an arrow at your face. You fucking idiot. You are useless. Jesus Christ. You only had one use, and that was a long while ago. Did I already read that? I could have sworn I haven't yet. Da fook. Apparently I'm reading books left and right and not remembering them anymore. Uh, that's the life of a drunk. <laughs> doing shit you don't remember anymore and I think there's some sort of mining thing around here there should be I remember there being one or maybe I'm just remembering the uh, spot from way back uh, werewolf savage uh, don't want to deal with that guy that guy because he'll probably kill me oh but I can Resurrect the wolf guy, I think. Maybe. Werewolf guy. Unless they patched that out. I forget. I forget if they patched that out or not. Uh, maybe. We'll find out. Gotta open this up first. And... Oh, fucker doodle! Okay. It's always gonna be a variation of fuck at this point. <laughs> Every time I break a lockpick. There we go. And he's already been looted. Let's try this. And maybe? No. Resisted and reanimate corpse. It was been patched out. Damn it. I remember like when I first got the game, you were able to resurrect the uh, werewolf bodies laying around. And it was cool. But I really shouldn't be doing magic around Vilkis anyway. Because... Magic's frowned upon in the Companions. I'll have you know that it's magic that beset us with this curse in the first place. Yeah. Okay. I blew out the mic there. Okay, dude. You're going down now. And decapitation. Vilkis, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I think I'm being a little too loud. I'm blowing out the mic a little bit. Then again, I'm... Kinda not, you know, used to this setup in the first place. I'm more used to crouching over the uh, microphone, basically. So, you know, this is working, so I'm not gonna question that. Okay, continuing on. And I think there's a guy right here to. Over here. Come on! There we go. And down you 
we go, and I'm going to heal myself because I feel that arrow is going to bring me down quite a bit in health. Also, going to take one of these and poison the great sword so I can deal some instant damage to this one. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna see if we can bring her down. There we go. Damn. Those are some strong arrows. And only using a longbow. She was friggin' power arm there. Jesus. And I think there's something back here. Yes, there is. Coin purse. Conjurer's draught and filter of the warrior. One of which I won't use, but the other one, maybe. Who knows? Uh, take all of that. I think the wisp wrappings are good for something. I don't remember what, but I know they're good for something. They have to be. They look so majestic and shit. Okay. Continuing on. We go in this direction. Upwards again. Again into the refuge. Where I think this is where the boss is. And I'm close to a level up, which will be good. Because that will save my ass if I run out of potions, which I will. I probably will. That's how the game likes to fuck me. <sighs> I do hardcore mode, yet this is the one that really fucks me. Ooh, plentiful healing, okay. Never mind. Game's nice to me, yay. Okay. Um, let's go this way. Take out some of those silver hand. I'll have him take out the shield leader. And take you from behind. Okay. That one's down. And down you go. All right. Take the gold. All right. That was good. A good concerted effort on the uh, leader there. Take that silver ingot. And that was... Okay. 260. Steel War Axe of Fatigue. Well, I can understand now why he was so tough. At least I think that's a he, right? It doesn't have... Yeah, it doesn't have that weird boob thing for the... You know steel plate armor, which is the only real gripe I have about the realistic designs of armor. I mean, first, the, uh, ooh, I want those. I want those. Uh, first, the, uh, leather armor kind of makes sense. I mean, it's basically a leather armor. There's not going to be much use of it anyway, or at least the fur armor. That's what I'm talking about, fur and hide. Uh, the, uh, oh, I'll take that. Ooh, and now I get my level up. Cool beans. But, uh, yeah, the fur armor I can basically understand. But the, uh, little thing with the plate armor makes no sense to me. Whatsoever. Because that just makes another point for the sword to pierce through. Having those uh, little... I, divots not, is not the right word. But it's... I... It's just, it doesn't work. It does not work. It just creates a point to easily pierce through with that point of weakness. And it just doesn't work. And I'm ranting about armor designs in a game that is not realistic. It has magic in it. And I'm, I'm sleepy. That is what I'm doing. I'm just being a sleepy, sleepy bastard. Um, what are we going to do? What I think I'm going to do is put a point in enchanting, but then again I might hold off on that and instead put it into smithing so I can get the arcane blacksmith and then I can worry about, you know, enchanting after that. Uh, yeah, I'll hold off. I'll not bother with this until, you know, I get an excess number of points like I wouldn't, you know, any other thing. Dark souls and whatnot. But uh, that's normally with specific builds. And I've never played Dark Souls, so I'm just basically talking out of my ass. <laughs> anyway, 
Let's go up. I mean, I've seen the two best friends play it. <laughs> the, those guys are pretty awesome. But, uh... I... I'm probably going to do a series on it. And I'm probably going to suck, considering I've never played it. And from what I understand, things are vastly different between Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. And they're doing the series on Dark Souls 2. So... I can't expect everything there to be the same, but it does seem like a game I want to be playing, especially with the lore behind it and everything. That is definitely a game I want to play, and I want to play it with you guys, but I know I'm going to suck and get angry comments, because I suck. <laughs> so, so, I got gold mine for snowberries, holy shit. There we go, that's the good stuff. And now we'll head back home, and I'll deal with all of my stuff. Back to White Run we go. Woo! Anyway. And I might probably do builds on my own, other than what I'd be doing in the series once I start it. And the only time I can see me starting the series is when I'm able to support myself on my own with this. Oh. Prepared Codlex's funeral by now. Come up to the Sky Forge to pay your respects. Of course I will. I'll be right behind you. But yeah, I will probably not start that series until I'm on my own and you know, supporting myself with YouTube. But I don't know when that's going to happen. And who knows, maybe I'll start it before then. I don't know. I'm just saying it's a series I really want to start, and I'm eager to. Alright, let's follow him. And I just went off on a complete tangent, so sorry about that. <laughs> I know it's weird when I go off on tangents, but it's... That's how what I am. That's what I am. I just talk. That's what I do. <laughs> it's what I do too well. Okay. Okay, I'll go here. Before the ancient flame, we grieve. We grieve. We grieve. At this loss, we, we weep. We weep. We weep. For the fallen, we, we shout. shout. And for ourselves, we, we take, take our take leave. Our leave. His spirit is departed. Members of the circle, let us withdraw to the Underforge to grieve our last together. Alright. And Yorlin's coming to me. Do you have the fragments of Ruthrad still? I, I do. Prepare them for mounting again. Alright. I return them with honor. Don't get too flowery on me, lad. Oh, fuck you! Of course, I have a small favor to ask of you. Okay. There's another piece that Kodlak always kept close to himself. Would you go to his chambers and bring it back for me? Okay. I'm not sure I'm the best one to go through his things. It would be my pleasure. Thank you. I'll be here. First he doesn't want me to be flowery and then common courtesy. Jesus. Alone. I understand. I have to do things myself. Ooh, that hurt a little. That was not pleasant. Anyway, continue on through your Vasker. And we'll be picking up that, and I'll be reading things. You'll, you'll find out. There we go. All the fragments of Uthrad were once held right there. Cadillac died defending them. <sighs> okay.
God damn. Okay, here we go. We go in here. And this is his room here. I'm not going to take anything from here, because it's not mine. Instead, we'll go to the end table, which has his things. A fragment of Wuthrad, a bit of gold, and Kodlak's journal. We're going to read from this. In my dream, I see the line of Harbingers, starting with Ysgrimor. Each of them ascends to Sovngarde until we come to Terfig, who first turned us to the ways of the beast. He tries to enter Sovngarde, but before he can even approach soon, he is set upon by a great wolf who pulls him into the hunting grounds, where Hircine laughs with welcoming arms. Terfig seems regretful, but also eager to join Hircine after a lifetime of service as a beast. Then I see every next harbinger turn away from Sovngarde and enter the hunting grounds of their own accord. Until it comes to me, and I see great soon on the misty horizon beckoning me, it appears I have a choice, and then at my side a stranger I had not seen before. As I look into his eyes, we turn to see the same wolf who dragged away Tyrfig, and he and I draw weapons together. I realize this is only a dream, but a strong enough dream to inspire a man like me to take to writing, so it must be of some import. I've spoken of my thoughts to the circle, withholding the part about the stranger, lest Skior worry I will no longer seek his counsel, and I was not surprised to hear them torn by it. Skior and Ayala are strong in the ways of the beast, and even seem to suggest that the hunting grounds would be their choice of afterlife, if it truly were a choice. Vilkas seemed the most trouble. The boy's as fierce as a saber cat in battle, but his heart's fire burns too brightly at times. He felt deceived, and I don't blame him. Farkas didn't know what to think, but I believe he will come around with me and his brother eventually. He usually does. I don't know what to do about Skior and Ayala. I know they respect the companions and me, but they take to the blood more deeply than the rest of us. Fortune smiles upon us. Yesterday, Vilkis was telling me how difficult it had been to, for him to give up his transformations until we can pursue a true pursue a true cure, the twins and I have chosen not to give in to the beast blood. For me, it's provided a clearer head, but Vilkis seems to be suffering a bit for it. Farkas seems completely untroubled. That boy continues to amaze me with his fortitude. While Vic Vilkis was confiding, through the shadows of Yorvaskar, I saw a newcomer approach, who wished to join our numbers. It was the stranger from my dream, the one who would stand with me against the beast. Vilkis began speaking obliquely, not wishing to air our problems in front of our guest, and I had to be doubly cautious to not reveal anything of our secrets to the newcomer, while also not revealing the details of my dream to Vilkis. I don't know how the politicians deal with this sort of machinations daily. In any case, I've sent Vilkis to test the newcomer. We'll see if he is truly the great warrior I dreamt of. This newcomer, it seems, is made of decent stock. He calls himself Tyrong, and he has already impressed some of the circle with his medal. I still keep my own counsel on his place in my dream, for now. Let us see what kind of destiny he is carving before hitching to him. In the meanwhile, I look for ways of cleansing my blood. The writings and legends on the subject are sparse and contradictory. I don't wish to engage any wizardry on this matter, but I fear they may be the only ones who best know how to navigate these worlds of knowledge. It's apparent to me now that Terfig's choice to turn us was indeed a mistake. Magics and their ilk are not in keeping with the spirit of the Companions. We face our problems directly, without the needs of such trickery. I can only hope to guide us back to the true path of Ysgrimor before the rot takes me. Tyrong continues to impress. I don't know yet where he will stand on the question of the blood, but the question has not been presented yet. He does know that we carry the beast's blood, and appears curious about it. Soon enough, I can explain our troubles, and hopefully see what role he will play. I'm amazed that Ayala thinks you can keep a secret among this drunken rabble. Especially with the loss of Skior, my heart aches. Emotions are fraying, and the walls of discretion are the first to fall. Apparently she and Tyrong are waging their own separate war against the Silver Hand. 
in retaliation for Skior's death. Their hearts are noble, but the course of vengeance is running hot, and I fear the counterstroke that may come if they do not rein in their fury. Tyrong shows valor, though, even in this more underhanded time. We have not had cause to speak much, and that is something I deeply regret. I have high hopes for his destiny, as I realize that his appearance in my dream may indeed mark him as the harbinger to succeed me. I have received few dreams in, over the course of my life, but when they come, I have learned to trust them. I have also learned to trust in the instincts of my heart, which is, tells me that Tyrone can carry the Companion's legacy as truly as any residing in Yorvaskar, especially with the loss of Skior. Ayella is too solitary, Vilkas too fiery, and Farkas too kind-hearted. Only Tyrong stands as a true warrior who can keep a still mind amidst these burning hearts. I will not speak to him of any of this, though. It is too much to burden another with. I hope that he and I can keep counsel over the coming years, that I can impart the wisdom of the Harbingers. All things in time. Firstly, I will seek his assistance in the matter of the Witches of Glen Morrill. It would appear that our path to the cure is not without some poetic justice for the tricksters who first cursed us. And there you go. We're going to be keeping that. And thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video, even though it is a lot of story, a lot of lore for the companions, and it's a little long. Jeez, it's already like 27 minutes. And I will see y'all in the next episode. This has been the one, the only, Stray Cat, playing games for you.